I found out. I'm a product of an affair. Daddy doesn't know. This will blow apart my family. Warning. The truth can set you free, but it can also set everything on fire. Out of curiosity and health issues, I took a DNA test in November 2019. It showed up that I had a half-sister and nieces. I was able to reach out to this half-sister in the same day and found my biological father as well. I was shocked, but not as surprised as I thought. I've always had questions. Because I don't share any traits of my dad, I look nothing like him. However, he is the man on my birth certificate. He had no idea I was not his biological daughter. I confronted my mother about my findings and she lashed out at me, calling me a liar. My biological father knew this whole time, but didn't find it appropriate to approach me about it because it wasn't a 100% positive thing. Up until a couple weeks ago, my dad and mother have not spoken to me. I showed up out of the blue because I wanted to resolve this situation with them. My mom has always had a bad relationship with me. She still refuses to speak to me, but my dad refuses to give up on me. He says, I have put 28 years into my daughter and I will not give that up. I am so fortunate that he has accepted this and me, my mother on the other hand. I learned I actually have three half-sisters between my mother and two other women. I have started a relationship with my half-sister, who I initially contacted. She is kind. My youngest sister is in the midst of an identity crisis, believing she is 100% Mexican, and just a couple days ago deciding she is now of Cherokee descent. It's kind of weird how all of our mothers look very similar. Our bio dad, clearly, had a type. The following comments really helped me. I think that, unfortunately, this is an all too common occurrence and side effect from these DNA tests. It can either rip a family apart or allow people to bring truth to light and begin healing decades old wounds. That can sometimes answer many questions and uncertainties held by the test taker. I'm really glad you got your truth. If nothing else, it allows you to see everyone for their true selves. Your dad, for instance, is clearly a good and loving person who cares about you deeply, and that's what truly matters. Your mother has also shown her true colors. Maybe not as flattering for her, but you have to take it for what it is. Maybe better to know than not to know. Man, as a male human being, this would hurt me a lot almost makes me wonder if I should make it a policy to test any kids who are supposed to be mine, but I don't think most women would take that understandingly. It's a good thing that your father came to know of this later than earlier. You would have wished to find this earlier maybe, but for your dad, I think it's better. Being a young man, emotionally attached to kids, then you find out that all those happy memories and news about you making her pregnant were just lies. And you've been living with a liar and you actually have no biological kids together, speaking generally. It would tear me apart emotionally. I find that I'm on the other side of this as well. I would be totally understanding if my loved one requested a paternity test for reassurance. I would never mess around, but I would never want that doubt either. I can't imagine the pain that this has caused my dad. I hope that me affirming him as my father helps and that he knows I appreciate everything he's done with me and for me. He spent a lot of time with me as a kid and helped craft me into who I am today. This is a crazy story, but I'm glad that you know. I suppose it's better to know than to not know. In my case, my parents were my parents. Mom passed in 2007 and dad's not really been in my life much. He's not a great dad. My grandparents told me like two weeks ago, that I have a brother and sister that my dad wanted nothing to do with and disowned, and I don't know anything about them. Family won't tell me anything or doesn't know. And it's really frustrating. 
also found out about a secret aunt that my family didn't know about. So I guess you find all kinds of crazy stuff via DNA testing. I feel better knowing. It was one of those things I've had twirling over in my head since I was a kid. My dad's mother hated my mom because she knew I wasn't my dad's child. She wasn't a moron. I wasn't a real part of the family and she didn't treat me like my cousins. I picked up on that as a little girl. My mom's sister also knew I wasn't my dad's child, but didn't know who my dad could actually be. My mom also had a pretty shitty reputation. Everyone seemed to know something about the situation, except me. Funny I would have to use all of that later in life to help me piece together what actually happened. Crazy stuff is an understatement, haha. Uh -huh. What's the reason for your sister to believe she's 100% Mexican? Sorry to know about your relationship with your mother, but good to see you have a fairly good relations with your two dads from what we interpret from your post. Good luck with your family and dealing with this. There is a lot to unpack there. She might be delusional or in the midst of an identity crisis or both. My older half-sister was not surprised to find out about me. She was very open-minded. I could have been met with the very opposite reaction. The youngest one, on the other hand, was incredibly upset when she found out about me. I'm not really sure why. Her mother and bio dad were never married. Upon getting to know her, she is infatuated with her social media presence. I can't come up with any other reason than delusion, or that she gets more Instagram likes, because she is claiming to be Mexican and Native American. I wanted to understand, so I asked my bio dad if her mother was perhaps either of those. Bio dad told me he wishes she'd stop this obsessive behavior. My bio dad had her mother text me, so we could get to know each other and to help me understand more. She was open to meeting me as well. Her mother sent me an older picture of herself and my youngest sister, with very pale skin leading to me believing she uses tons of self-tanner. Youngest sister's mother is of Irish descent, fair-skinned. Youngest sister claims to get her heritage from bio dad, but we can see that isn't the case. It just bothers me that she is clearly using this to benefit in some way. When I first met her, she claimed to be a pretty big deal somehow. I think that perhaps the identity crisis worsened when she found out about me because she doesn't feel special or something along those lines. Regardless, I don't really want to know her better, based on our interactions so far. It's fascinating how the nature versus nurture comes into play. I am a bit mechanically inclined, like my bio dad, and I've had an interest in cars, mechanics, and taking things apart. I work in computer science. I race cars. Bio dad showed interest in bonding with me based on my interests. I believe she was only pretending to be interested also because it could get her attention and sees that I am legitimately into this without effort. Suddenly, I'm the competition? I wish I could explain it. I was so excited when she told me she was into cars. I could have never imagined having sisters, let alone being able to possibly bond with one who was into the same things I am into. Maybe I'm a little out of touch when it comes to female relationships and the dynamic they bring. Based on your post, it seems that you have always had a difficult relationship with your mother. That said, I find it rather strange that your mother is the one who is most upset about this and, as a result, is angry with you. If anything, shouldn't it be the other way around? I understand that these sorts of situations aren't rational, but I really don't understand how she can be mad at you. What do you do wrong? Right. That's what everyone around me is saying. I believe I have dealt with this situation very well considering. I have started going to counseling to get a professional opinion, as I believe most people around me have a bias and share the thought that my mom is honestly a terrible person. I didn't ask for this situation and it's completely unreasonable for her to be upset with me. She is only upset because I have undone a 28-year web of lies. 
Apparently, she had lied. That I was born two months premature to get it to line up with my dad leaving for deployment. Too bad she was screwing around on him and he is such a nice, trusting man. He had absolutely no idea. I think his initial anger at me was due to her manipulating him. It's a lot to sort through. That is for certain. Well, I hope it works out for you. This is a difficult situation for you. Learning that your dad isn't your real biological dad, meeting your bio dad and new siblings, etc. It's a lot to process and cope with, and none of these things is your fault. It's really unfortunate that your mom feels this way and is venting her anger, at what exactly? On you. Hopefully the situation will improve over time. Thanks for reading my post. I believe I have already coped with the possibility of not having my mother around, as I have essentially grieved the loss of not having her around my entire life. My dad is my rock, so the possibility of losing him was absolutely devastating, which was initially what led me to seek counseling. After scheduling that appointment, I was able to have that conversation, where he said he wouldn't give up on me, and we have had several conversations since. I decided to keep my appointments to process the situation anyways, although I see it as moving in a positive direction. I hope anyone else in a similar situation is able to take something positive from me sharing this. You can't control how she feels, so you have to probably figure out how to just deal with whatever she is going through. It is unfortunate she is taking it out on you, when the situation you are all in is clearly because of her. With that being said, the only reason I can think of that she could be mad at you, and I do not believe she should be, and that she is in the wrong, is because you didn't go to her first, where she could try to talk you into keeping her secret. That would have been a terrible position for you to be in and very selfish of her, if that were to happen. This may not be the case, but it is hard for me to see another reason she would hold such a grudge. When I initially went to her about it, I had already talked to my bio dad and sister, and she was very upset that she would have to tell my dad. I gave her the option, to be honest, but she kept up with the lie, until I let her know what I found. She did insist on keeping it a secret, told me to force my half-sisters to never say anything to anyone ever. It can just be your girl's little secret. Which seems bizarre and also very unreasonable. I'm not going to try to force other people to do something out of her sake for cheating and lying. She needs to own up to her so-called mistake. My mother even went as far as saying she wished she terminated her pregnancy. I am her only child, by the way. I was raised with two half-brothers from my dad's two previous marriages. I hope you can still follow. The oldest is in full support of me, regardless of what happens in this situation, which is nice. Some of you asked more info on my mother, so here it is. I believe she is actually mentally ill. She is an alcoholic and exhibiting narcissistic personality traits. I don't know how my dad deals with her, honestly. My dad is 70 years old. She has had a very cushiony life so far and hasn't worked in a very long time. My mom will be 54 years old and has done absolutely nothing in her life, except be miserable. I think she desperately needs help, but I don't think she will ever reach out. My aunt, who I also found out isn't my full aunt, but a half, believes that my mom had every intention of abandoning me or leaving me with my grandma. My aunt feels bad that she didn't step in regarding my upbringing, but I assured her it does no good feeling bad about it now. It is fascinating though, the patterns I have found here. My grandma's, the mother of my aunt and mother, was about 20 years younger than her husband. My grandma messed around with another guy, but was married with my grandpa who provided her with a very easy, luxurious life, too. I'm just fortunate to have come out of this whole situation as self-aware and patient as I am. I am terrified of alcohol, though. In my 28 years, I haven't even tried it. 
I can't bring myself to do it, based on what I was subject to growing up. I can confidently say that I am a break in the cycle of her bad behavior, though. My mother might have resented me my whole life due to knowing that I wasn't my dad's daughter. I come to realize there are a lot of moving pieces to this crazy situation. Royal AI. A little backstory. If you don't feel like looking in my previous post history, I found out about my birth giver's lies in 2019. I have finally been in no contact with my narcissistic mother after finding the truth by doing a DNA test. I found my biological father, which happened to be on the same day I got my results in 2019 because he was a family friend. I have got to know him, along with one of my three sisters. The youngest sister hates me for some reason, and I believe this revelation prompted her to take a DNA test too to see if I was making things up. Turns out, we share 31.2% of our DNA. My dad found it rough to deal with. When I first talked about the possibility of me not being his biologically and showing him the proof, and my mom seemed determined to keep us apart. When I visited them to smooth things over, my dad seemed to accept me. Well, one year later, my dad, the man on my birth certificate, decided he would throw me away instead. I bought him a new phone so he could stay in touch with me, but then he went back on his word. I gave him one last chance by inviting only him to my wedding, but he refused and threatened me with a no-contact order. On the happy side of things, my brother, the oldest of dad's two biological sons, came to my wedding and was so happy that I invited him. I hope this is finally the end to this ordeal because it was a lot to process over the past couple years. I hope anyone reading this with a situation similar to mine, just remember, there are people out there who love you. You may not choose your blood family, but you are able to choose who you consider family. I want to thank you all for taking time to read my story, commenting, and sending me messages. You are all wonderful people, and I truly appreciate the outpouring of love I've received. Thank you so much. Holy cow, it sounds like you still have some support, old and new siblings, but I'm so sorry how this has gone for you. Do you mind me asking? You noted, you invited only your dad to your wedding. Is he still with your mother? Yes, my dad is still with her, but I believe she is parasitically manipulating him. She believes that I must apologize for uncovering this lie. I refuse to do that. He has somehow sided with her, that I owe her an apology. It is a stalemate. I miss my dad so much. But I am glad my toxic mother is 100% out of my life. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that he's still married to his wife who lied and presumably cheated to him. And blames you? I'm sure you miss him. But how do you throw a whole kid out? but stay with a deceiving, cheating wife? I can't either, but I'd rather not spend the time trying to figure out why it is the way it is. I think my mom has spun the story in such a way that he believes I am wrong, or that I'm a liar when, in fact, he is choosing to keep living with the liar. I've done nothing besides take a DNA test to see if I would uncover if I was more susceptible to certain things like celiacs, etc. And I am. Also, I saw someone ask more about my mother, but I lost the comment. So here it is. As I mentioned before, I've never had a good relationship with my mother. I think I've spent the majority of my life mourning for a relationship with a mother figure. Mine always chose the bottle over her only daughter, me. My dad always boasted being a man of integrity and essentially having a spine. But when this all unfolded, it made me realize what little integrity he has. He couldn't stand up for what is right in this situation. I see him as a small, spineless, and weak man because of it. Someone I looked up to, 
fell apart in front of me. My birth giver has caused many issues for our family. She has managed to put a lot of distance between him and my two older brothers. They went for years of not talking because of something my mother took out of context and due to his severe anger problems, would take that out on my brothers, their wives, and even their poor kids. It's a vicious cycle and he acknowledges it, however. He lacks the will to do anything about it. I know she spends all his money on frivolous, pointless objects to fill some void in herself. Do you know the show called Hoarders? The house looks like that, except it's a lot of new expensive stuff, most even unboxed. God forbid you actually use something like a blender. No, it's too new. But yes, your highness mother, it's seven years old. When are you gonna use it? Then there are more blankets, towels, and food rations, and the basement is reminiscent of a Red Cross disaster shelter. She's a disaster prepper and doesn't even realize it. Regardless, she keeps buying more and more, and the house has definitely become a fire hazard, and Dad is totally complacent in the matter, keeping the peace above all else. Another thing to point out, I believe she has a tremendous amount of credit card debt that Dad is unaware of. A cousin of mine found my grandfather's checkbook and noticed there was a check made out to her for $25,000. Cousin also noted to me while assisting our great aunt after back surgery that there was another check to her for $10,000. It makes sense. She doesn't work and she's spending copious amounts of money on dumb shit that has no purpose. Fake rings, hundreds of jeans, shirts, poor quality Chinese goods from Wish, etc. I used to receive daily digest on their address and each time, there would be three to four parcels arriving after. She's very good at hiding these things. Dad is just completely unaware because he never sees credit card statements as he is busy building a cabin. So she can wipe up her tracks and make minimum payments on these things without him catching on. I can understand being angry and feeling betrayed by a partner who cheats on you and lies to you about a child's paternity. I cannot accept or understand dropping an innocent child to the curb after raising them for 20 plus years and believing they are your own. That never sat right with me. I hope you are thriving and dealing well with any emotional fallout from their poor choices. I am doing much better now. Took a while to get here, but I've made it. I was making the mistake of trying to apply logic to an illogical situation and kind of spinning my wheels, sort of speak. There is no logic here. None of it makes sense. Without these people in my life, I can be at peace though. What in the results gave the affair away? Biological father was married and my birth giver was sleeping around, but then picked my dad as my father because he made good money perfect host for the parasite that she is. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I can't believe how people like your mother can willfully cause so much pain to three different people when they choose to hide false paternity like that. I'm glad you chose to go for the DNA test. Who would do that to their own child? It boggles the mind. It boggles my mind as well. I suffer from several chronic diseases that are not present in my family, so I wanted answers. Naturally, as an adult, I started out with a DNA test. Royal AI. I'm not sure why this post is getting traction again, but soon, after this post, my dad was given an ultimatum by my mother, her or me which prompted my dad to respond to me in an uncharacteristic way, which prompted all communication to end around August 2020. I got married in 2021, and he didn't attend. Normally, I would have loved to have had my dad be part of my wedding day, but due to the circumstances, we had a very tiny informal ceremony. My grandfather, mom's dad, was able to attend my wedding, along with my aunt, my mom's sister, who actually is a half-sister and absolutely despises my mom, 
My two cousins and my dad's oldest son and family attended. My oldest brother still considers me his sister, so I was happy he made the trip. My husband's parents pretty much took care of everything for us. I did extend my dad an invitation prior to my wedding, but I don't remember if he even responded to my message. On the other hand, my biological father, who I owe absolutely nothing to, was bent out of shape that he and his new girlfriend of the moment, whom I didn't even know, didn't receive an invitation to the wedding. The older sister of mine, who I had reached out to initially, was understanding and felt that I had no obligation to invite her or her husband to my wedding. I stopped contact entirely with my biological father in December 2022. He brings nothing positive to my life and really just enjoys creating his own problems. I don't have room for this. Unfortunately, my oldest sister passed in June 2023. She was murdered by her husband, and I don't know how I feel about never getting to know her. This did set into motion, the reconnecting with my youngest sister. The initial separation between her and I seemed to disappear. There was also some other tension brewing between us, which was caused by our biological father when he was putting his head into things that didn't concern him. But that also seemed to be of the past now. So I have contact with my two remaining sisters, though not often. I saw my older sister maybe twice a year, but definitely more at this point. My grandpa, last grandparent of mine, passed away in October 2023. This prompted the whole family to attend a celebration of life for him, where my mom was present too, and of course, decided to act like absolutely nothing was wrong. Totally nuts. Also, my biological dad showed up at that gathering. It's just too crazy. My dad, just prior to the celebration of life, finally told my mom he wanted to stay in contact with me, and when he saw me, promised me she'd come around. I met my dad for lunch in February, and he got to talk to me about all the projects he's building. Progress is progress, even if it's little steps forward. It was nice to talk to him, but I have no expectations. Every time I dropped in to say hi when I knew she wasn't around, he was happy to see me and acted like his normal self. He was proud of me for graduating college and said that he missed me. But my mom truly is a master of manipulation. I really think my dad is just trying to appease her because she will and can truly make his life miserable. I can understand his blunt and mixed reaction because he has to live with her. It's just been a whirlwind and there are a lot more pieces to it that I am putting in this update. I am just really grateful for my husband and his wonderful, stable family. They are all very kind, and I am very fortunate to have them. Along with my friends, they've all really helped me through this process. This brings us to the end of this episode. Let's hope OP will find peace. This story shows that cheating is usually combined with other bad life choices from the cheater's perspective. It's sad that OP, in all her honesty, is the one who suffered the most. As you can see, not every cheating story ends with rainbows or, for the vengeful ones, in scorched earth scenarios. What would you advise OP? Let us know down below. Hey there. Do you remember me? The original voice, from some time back. As you stayed till the end, your opinion matters to this channel. Would you like to hear my voice again? Let me know down below. If not, that's fine too. Please let me know either way. I want to make sure that your experience is always top notch. Don't forget to smack the like button and if you have a story you're willing to share, email it to contactroyalai at gmail.com. See you in the next one.